Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Bracey Sports Media. My name is Aaron Bracey, and I'm thrilled to be joined today by Mark Eckel. Mark is the longtime Eagles beat reporter for the Trenton Times and NJ.com, and he currently covers the NFL for Betters Insider and Packers Report 66. Mark, thanks so much for joining us here today here on Bracey Sports Media. Uh, it, it's my pleasure, Aaron. Glad things are going well. Mark, you covered the Eagles for a long time, uh, beginning in 1985. Um, what was that experience like covering the Eagles? And one of the things that always impressed me as a reader of yours and also then a colleague is you were able to break a lot of stories at a suburban newspaper. And at that time, things didn't really go viral on Twitter and all this. People actually had to pick up the paper. What that? was your success on the beat and your approach to covering the beat? Well, great question. Um, my approach was just to be fair. I, you know, I, I had people tell me I was too hard on the team, that I had other people tell me, Oh, uh, you're a homer. I mean, it was crazy. I, you hear it from both sides. Like Giants fans told me I, I love the Eagles and Eagle fans. I would say, well, ask an Eagle fan that because they thought I hated the Eagles. But I just tried to be honest and fair. And like when they won, I would tell you, they, you know, they played well and why they won and how they won. And if they lost, the same thing, why they lost and how they lost and what they have to do next week so they don't lose again, you know. Um, I, I got along with a lot of players. I, I would say that if, you know, like, I don't know if writers are the same as coaches, but like, you know how some coaches get deemed as players coaches? Right. Well, I think I was a player's writer. I, I mean, I got along. There, there, there was probably only like one or two players in all my years that I could say I didn't get along with. Um, we, can, we, we can get into that later. But <laughs> I was going to ask, coaches, who are they? <laughs> Anton Davis was one. Uh, and, and we'll get into bad first round picks later. But, um, yeah. but for the most part, like it, some of the coaches – I, I had problems with, or they had problems with, with me. Uh, ownership, um, Joe Banner and I did. We didn't get. A, I mean, it was bad. It's all. It was just real bad. How That's Rose probably why the players loved you then. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and guess what? See, I always like my thing was as a fan be, before I started covering the team. When I was just a fan of sports, right? I didn't even know who like the general manager of the teams were. I mean, I, you you knew who the coach was, obviously, but but the play I I liked whoever I like because of the players on the team. So that's how I approach covering it. I'm going to write about the players. I didn't, I didn't think people cared a whole lot about the guy, you know, the, the personnel director. I mean, they're important. Don't get me wrong, but you're paying your money to watch Randall Cunningham play quarterback or Reggie White sack a quarterback or Troy Vincent intercept a pass or whatever. Mike Quick make a, kick, a, a great catch. So I got close to players. And then you said getting stories and thank you. Um, players give you stories. Right. You get close to players, players will tell you what's going on. Mark, you cover a lot of drafts. Can you explain to, to people watching and listening, what was it like to cover that first day, that first round draft? Because it's very late, it's very hectic, things are going crazy. What was your experience like covering that, well, covering that it's day? It's funny that, that you bring that up because when I, first, I go back in 1985, it wasn't like that. Okay. I've seen the draft go from, it used to be on a Tuesday morning, Aaron. Oh, wow. Started, it started when I cut my 85, and the Trenton Times was an afternoon paper then. Mm -hmm. So I actually was able to – I'm pretty sure I was actually, to, actually able to get – the Eagles picked high enough and early enough that I was able to get my story in Tuesday evening's paper on, on their first round pick. Times have changed. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, we, like, there were newspapers, like you said. But <laughs> That's anyway, true. Um, so when it first started, it was like I said, it was like Tuesday morning – I believe they got like, I don't, don't hold me to this. I think like maybe four or five, six rounds. Maybe I think it was four in the first day. And then they come back Wednesday and finish. And it was 12 rounds then too. When I, it, was, it was a 12 round draft. Um, then I guess in the, and it just got bigger and bigger. And I, I'll be honest, I've always loved it. I was probably the one writer, I don't want to say one, but one of the writers. I, a lot of guys hated covering the draft. I've always enjoyed the draft. I mean, as a, as a fan prior to, I used to get up and watch it. I mean, I, I just liked it. I like the whole – I like the NBA draft. I'm not even a big NBA fan, but I like the NBA draft. Um, I like the Major League Baseball draft. I just like – I like seeing how teams operate and who picks who and trying to guess. I, I love doing them. I don't do 100 mock drafts like everybody else does now. I still just do one, and I try to make it as best as I can. Um, but I like that. I like trying to guess and see how things go. And there's always surprises, you know, things that you say, wow, I never thought that guy was going to go to that team or whatever. But it has changed. It's gotten bigger and bigger. And uh, TV, obviously, has made it – it's become a primetime event now, obviously. And uh, they broke it into three night, you know, three days now. Friday's the first round – or Thursday the first round. 
Friday rounds two and three, and then the rest on, on Saturday. Um, but it, it's really evolved. Um, I used to, I remember Mel Kuyper Jr. I used to deal with him all the time. I mean, he would, like, and nobody knew. Well, he was who, the I, only I one doing him. it, right? They're, yeah, he was like, like, and people know him, but he, he, he wasn't the mega star that he is now. I mean, everybody knows him now. I mean, but he would call me and we would talk and he was always a big, obviously he was really into it. Right. Um, but he was like really into it. I mean, he would call me like the, that morning, like even when it got to where it was Saturday, um, it used to be Saturday, Sunday, right? It was two days at one point. Yeah, Saturday, Sunday. He would call me like first thing Saturday morning for the draft. He'd be like, Mark, are you ready? I'm like, I'm ready, yeah. I mean, I don't think they're going to ask me who to pick, but yeah, I'm, you know, he'd be so excited. And, you know, so the Eagles are going to get a pretty good party thing at this pick, right? And I'd be like, yeah, you know, I think they're looking at this or that. And, but it was great. I, and again, I still, I still enjoy it. I'm looking forward, I'm really looking forward to, to, to this year's draft because what, what's, of what's going on now is the only sports break we, we have. Mark Eckel joining us here today on Brazy Sports Media. Mark, let's get into some drafts that you covered. Uh, there were some, have been some really interesting drafts, but Buddy Ryan's first draft in 1986 was notable for a couple of players that he picked up in the late rounds. What do you remember about that draft? And of course, the players I'm talking about are Seth Joyner and Clyde Simmons, who were picked in the eighth and ninth round and went on to combine for 28 seasons and five Pro Bowls. Not too bad for an eighth and ninth round pick. Probably two of the best Eagles of all time. And they wouldn't even, if you think about it, eighth and ninth picks, eighth and ninth round picks, they wouldn't be drafted now. Yeah. Those seven right. rounds, right? So neither right. Would, would have even gotten drafted. Wow, amazing. That draft, that draft, Aaron, was just so newsworthy from the beginning to the end. I could have written – a story on every on every round. I mean, I actually wrote a chapter in my the book I wrote, the uh, the Big Fifty, the, uh, the the men and moments that made the Philadelphia Eagles. I have a whole chapter on that '86 draft. It starts off with, and we didn't know Buddy. Buddy had just gotten hired in February, I guess, after the Bears won the Super Bowl. The Eagles hire him. The draft's like in April, so we, he's only been around a couple months. We don't know how to take this guy, and he's pretty outrageous. And right from the go, he was kind of. Where's this guy coming from? A reporter's dream, though, in many oh, I ways, right? I, I love them. We stayed friends till the day he, 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 he passed away. Um, loved the buddy. Loved covering him. Loved him as a person. Uh, but we don't. But at this point, we don't know. This, we don't know. Well, he's on. He has a radio show the night before the draft, and they're asking him about this different guys. And Keith Byers' name gets brought up, and Buddy calls him a medical reject because he's a <laughs> oh, good wow. player, but it, but he's a medical reject. We wow. can't take him. So we're like, oh, well, I guess the Eagles aren't taking Keith Byers. And he, and th- then he goes on to play up this Anthony Tony, Right. Who we all thought, and, and didn't he play for the Sixers? And Andrew, oh, no, it's Andrew. Andrew. Tony. But he was talking about, the, about this fullback from Texas A&M, who, who, he, who he, he really loves. That'd be hard. What, and it, we, we, everybody thought the Eagles might take a running back in, in the first round because they really didn't have one. Well, here comes the draft, and he takes Keith. After calling him a medical reject, he takes Keith Byers in the first round. Great smoke screen by Buddy. Exactly. And then he, but then he takes Tony in the second round. Then he comes out and says, I told you I liked him. <laughs> so we don't, know, we don't know when he's telling the truth or when he's lying. They yeah, also he, trade it. Then they, then they trade a third round pick to the San Francisco 49ers for Matt Cavanaugh, uh, who was Montana's backup. And at the time, a guy that you thought, this guy might be pretty good. He's just a, you know, he has no chance to play in San Francisco. They got Mon- Montana and they're about to get Steve Young. There's no room for, for, Matt, for Matt Cavanaugh, but he might be pretty good. So they do that, and that's, that's just a start. <laughs> then, then they take in the fourth round, they take a guy named Matt Darwin, who had been drafted the year before by the Cowboys and never signed. Huh. Never, just never signed. So he can go, he's, he's eligible to, get, to go back in the draft. The Eagles take him in the fourth round. That alone's a pretty good story. But it's like that the, didn't work out as well as John Elway did with, uh, was it? Didn't, didn't no, Elway, Elway forced the trade. He forced oh, the trade. Oh, the trade. Okay. Darwin sat out a whole year. He, he was out of college, sat the whole year, just didn't play football for a year. Went back in the draft, the Eagles take. He turned out to be a very good left tackle for you. So, he, so you have that. Oh, they also took Alonzo Johnson that year, who was a He's really a, good player out of Florida. Florida State, I forget now. But he was a guy that had all kind of drug problems. And, mid-80s, right? Yeah. But he was, and, it was when it, and, when, and it was when they first started cracking down on that stuff. So he got suspended right from the go. He never, he never, and everybody's quote on that was, you know, I never knew much about drugs. Now I know too much. <laughs> so well, Mark I, and the uh, – And then they go on, like you said, then they go on and get Clyde Simmons and Seth Joyner. Seth Seth, right. Ever, right. Ever later in that draft. How did that, how did that happen? I mean, how could, how could those guys have slipped that far? And how did Buddy know to pick those guys? 
Well, Buddy had a great eye for talent. He really did. And as, as much as I, as I like to give him credit for that, I mean, if he really liked me, he probably would have taken him a little higher than eighth and ninth, right? He'd taken him fifth and sixth even. But uh, both of them went to – I mean, they didn't go to football powers. That's the more – that's my question more to that is, how did Seth not get recruited by a better college than right. Texas yeah. El Paso? And how did, how did Clyde Simmons not get recruited by a better college than Western Carolina? I mean, yeah. come on. They had to be pretty good. Night. Or did they really late bloomers? I mean, well, see, see, Clyde just kept getting bigger. That was his thing. I, I think when, when, when he got to college, he was maybe like 240, 245. And he just kept getting, you know, bigger. But where he got to, you know, over 300 pounds and became just a monster on, a, on the defensive line. And um, Seth, you know, if, if you know him or even, even, even if you see him on, on TV now doing the Eagles pregame or postgame, he's the most intense person yeah. ever. I mean, all, and that's how he, he's like that in real life and he's like that on, on the field. I mean, Ryan Dawkins was intense on the field, but very different off the field. Seth was as intense. So then there, we, <laughs> we skip ahead a couple years. There was a 1995 draft, which – uh, was a big draft for what happened in the combine and who the Eagles picked. That was Ray Rhodes' first draft. Right. And, of course, that was uh, the Eagles picked Mike Mamula, seventh overall. What do you remember yeah. about that draft? Oh, that was a good one, too, because that's, that's the thing. And Mike Mamula was not as bad a player as Eagle fans want to say he was. What it was, he wasn't the seventh best player in the draft. That's, that's a fact. But he was never supposed to be. When the, when the season ended, when the college football season, and this is why I tell people, God, that was 25 years ago, and I, and I use that example all the time when I, when I do my draft stuff, when I talk to people about the draft. Football players play football. Watch them play football. Don't, I don't care how, they, how fast they run in, in, in shorts and a T-shirt. I don't care what their vertical jump is or how much weight they lift in, in, in with 25 reps or whatever. I don't, I don't care. I mean, that's not what they're being asked to do. They're being asked to play football. So watch the film. Watch them play 12 college football games a year, you know, over the course of the year and see what they do. Well, Mike Mamula was projected to be a low first round, maybe second round pick. When the college, and he had a good year at Boston College. He had, you know, he had some sacks. He played very well against Notre Dame. But then he goes to the combine and becomes like the first guy to really just blow up the combine. He runs faster than any other defensive line. He, as a defensive lineman, he, he put up numbers that like, he was running faster than some cornerbacks. And he lifted wow. and he did this. And he, did, he just blew it up to where he became the seventh pick of the draft. And he actually played like a low first round or early second round pick, which is what he really was. In that same draft, however, the Eagles get Bobby Taylor, the right. cornerback of Notre Dame, in the second round. And Barrett Brooks right. right behind him. Right. But Bobby Taylor was, when the, again, when their season ended, he was considered the best cornerback coming out of college. Well, he didn't, he didn't have a great combine. He did okay. Other, other cornerbacks did much better at the combine. Bobby became like the fifth or sixth cornerback taken in that draft. And you could argue he was the best. I mean, Ty Law was pretty good, too, for, for, for the Patriots. Right. But Bobby was at worst the second best, if not. And you could, like I said, you could argue him and Ty Law, both very good, good players. But, again, if you watch them play football, Bobby should have gone in the first round, not the middle of the second round. Mark, why do you think the combine has become such a factor in, in the draft? Well, I think it's losing its luster now. I think the last few years, coaches and general, or more, I should say general managers, are using it. The best thing about the combine now is getting to meet the kid. The interview. Interview them. Right. I forget what they do. On it. it's, it's good for, you know what it's good for? It's good for, like, the kid from Central Michigan. Or, no one sees. Right, or Western Carolina. You could go to that and, you know, you don't know about him because his competition, yeah, maybe he had 15 sacks, but he was against, it wasn't against Ohio State and Michigan and Alabama and LSU. It was against lesser competition. So for stuff like that, it's probably, it probably helps. But the main thing is to talk to, they get to interview the kids. They, they get to see them in a certain environment off the field. And I think that is more important than that. That affects teams more yeah. and more than, than what they actually, it's for the, the me. I covered a couple of combines. Now, this is crazy, too. I covered a combines, like, I guess, in the late 90s, early 2000s. We weren't allowed to watch. Wow. Writers were, no, it was closed. We had to sit in the hotel lobbies, wait for the coaches and agents and whatever to, to come back, and then they would tell us, oh, so-and-so did this, and so-and-so did that, and this guy looked great, and this guy didn't look so good. And then, and then they would make players available, 
you know, to us either in a group setting or if you wanted a certain guy by yourself, whatever. Now um, everything's televised. Now it's on TV. <laughs> you're still watching on TV. <laughs> they, you know, commentate about it. It's, it's crazy. It's just the NFL draft, of all the things I've covered in, in my life, nothing has blown up from the first time I covered it till now, like the NFL draft. Mark Eckel joining us here today on Bracey Sports Media. Mark, uh, the Eagles have the number 21 pick in the first round this year, and a lot of people are hoping they select a wide receiver since it's such a heavy wide receiver uh, draft. But the Eagles have only picked three wide receivers in the first round over the last 35 years. Nelson Aguilar in 2015, Jeremy Macklin in 2009, and Freddie Mitchell in 2001. Why has there been so few wide receivers taken? Well, the Eagles, the Eagles as, a, as a team, and, and going back, well, I mean, going, I don't, going way back there, um, since the Banner-Reed thing, and Jeffrey Lurie, Joe Banner, Andy Reed, let's start with that. And then Harry Roseman is just a disciple of Joe Banner's in a lot of ways. So they, don't, they value certain positions over others. Offensive line has always been a high-value spot for the team. Defensive line, quarterback, that, and, and, and cornerback to, to right. a little bit of a, of a lesser extent. But um, like linebacker, they, 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 they never draft. People have them drafting a linebacker in the first. Like I, I look at some national things, and I see people giving the Eagles a Patrick Queen from LSU. Or, and it makes sense because you, you look at their roster right. and, and you say, oh, they need a linebacker. Well, they're always going to need a linebacker because they don't care about linebacker. So, they, yeah, you can say that every year they need a linebacker. Wide receiver isn't quite as low on the list as linebacker. But they don't – I mean, look at those great – I mean, you could argue that the Eagles would have gotten to and won a couple more Super Bowls right. if they would have given Donovan Mc, – I mean, the one year they gave him a number one receiver, Terrell Owens, they went they to the went. Super Bowl. Right. But Who when they were giving him Todd Pinkston and James Thrash and – Calvin Williams. No, that's – Calvin was before that. I mean, he was Calvin was before that, okay. <laughs> but, I mean, they gave him – and those guys were okay. They, were not, they weren't bad players, but they weren't number ones. Um, the Eagles' philosophy has always been – a great quarterback can make average receivers better. And I think Andy brought that with him from Green Bay where Brett Favre did that. Brett Favre never had a number one. Well, he had Sharp at the beginning, but then when they got really good, he had Robert Brooks and Antonio Freeman and guys that were third, second, and third, fourth round picks. So that was – I think Andy kind of brought that with him. Banner bought bought into it as well. Um, And, again, you know, this year – I think the Eagles are going to take a wide receiver at 21, but I wouldn't rip them if they didn't because you could get a good – you can get good wide – in this draft, second, third round, you could still get good wide receivers. So that's what I was going to ask you next. You look at the receivers, um, the consensus top three. I don't know where you stand on it, but – I don't know, like the third one. So you, so you got Lamb, Ruggs, and Judy. Is Judy the one you don't like? No, I, love, I don't I like, like Ruggs. You don't like Ruggs. I love Judy. I love Lamb. And then I guess the next tier would be Jefferson, and then you have Higgins and Ike. So – I'm going to give you a guy, Aaron. I'm Got going to it. Go ahead. Jalen Rieger. So TCU. what would you – if you were drafting, what would you do? Well, who's there? Tell me who's there at 21. Uh, Lamb, and, Lamb and Judy are gone, right? Lamb and Judy are gone. So you don't like rugs. I don't so like – So do you go Jefferson or do you go some other position? I'd probably take Rieger because I really like Rieger and I think they do too. Um, only because – they're not, I don't think they're going to take an offensive lineman. They, they took one last right. year. They have Lane Johnson. They have that. They, they, they invested in Dillard. So they're not going to take a tackle there. You know, I don't, at 21, you should get a guy that's going to come in and play, not be a, a backup for a few years. They can get a tackle later on to be the, to be the backup. Um, they could use a defensive end, I think, but I don't see a good – I don't see a, a real good defensive end being there at 21. Right. For I mean, Chase Young isn't going to fall. Um, so I, I think I think the best player on the board at 21 will be a wide receiver, and it just so happens to be their their, ma- their major right. need. Because um, I said they're not taking. If I would take Kenneth Murray if he's there at 21, okay. the linebacker from Oklahoma, because I love him. He he might be my favorite player in this draft. Do you know the Eagles don't pick linebackers? Yeah, no, sure. not, not. So they'll probably take a receiver. And like I said, I'm I'm gonna I'm guessing Jalen Rieger is their guy. He's Mark, fast. Did, go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, they they need speed at receiver. I did a Twitter poll. I have here a list. You can't see it that well, but it's a list of picks. I'm going to read it to you. The Eagles have taken over the years. So I want you to tell me who you think was their best pick by round in the last 35 years, and we'll see how you compare to the Twitter polls and tell me why. 
right. third round picks. Now I picked these four choices, so I okay. maybe I missed two on these four. Right. Uh, third round picks: Nick Foles, Brian Westbrook, Jeremiah Trotter, Deuce Staley. Who who's the uh, best pick out of that group and why? That's four pretty good players in the third round. Yeah. I mean, I love Deuce, but it's not Deuce. It's, I like I like Trotter. It's not Trotter. It's either Westbrook to me is the second best running back in franchise history, but only behind Steve Van Buren, who right. I never saw play. But I, my God, when you, when you look at the numbers and what he did in back-to-back titles and all that, he's he's so underrated by people that because it happened so long ago. So I want to say Westbrook. But damn, Nick Foles was a Super Bowl MVP. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to go so, against. All right, let's look at round four. Okay. Quentin Demps, Jason Avant, Todd Hermans, and William Thomas, the league T. Oh, Willie T. What he he's Willie people T. don't remember Willie T. The he's Twitter good. poll fans Twitter poll agree with you on Westbrook for round three, but they over Foles. They, they picked Harry yeah, over Foles, which surprised me. They they picked uh Harrymans in round four, and I think because a lot of people don't remember Willie T. What what yeah, what, yeah, what talk yeah. about what, what yeah. Willie T brought to the team? He was by he was I mean Rich Cote had awful drafts. I mean, he, I mean, he did. He had awful – but that was by far his best pick ever. He got him in the fourth round. Willie T, I mean, looking back, I don't think I, – I know I'll say personally, I didn't realize how good he was until he, he wasn't there. Right. I mean, he wasn't – you know what, too? He wasn't Seth. And that's who he was coming in with. Like, and he eventually kind of re- replaced Seth when Seth left as a free agent. He wasn't that kind of player. But he was a really good cover guy. Um, I don't know how many career picks he had, but a lot for a linebacker. Uh, he could blitz when, when asked. Just a, just a good overall football player that Andy got – and Andy got rid of him. When, when he came in, he, he, he let him go, and he, he wound up going to the Raiders and having some pretty good years for Oakland as well. A couple uh, other uh, rounds here. Round, yeah. round five, some yeah. good players in here too. Brent Selleck, Trent Cole, Ike Reese, David Alexander. Trent Cole. What was just the sacks? Was he good. Player. I mean, he, yeah, he was just, he was a force for four or five years. He was a really good defensive end. What made him so good? Speed. A, a offensive end with, with some pretty good, you know, he had a real good speed move, speed rush. Um, but then he, you know, he came in again. He was a guy that I think he was like 230 something in college. Wow. 230. And, and, and he, he put on some weight. I no wonder why he drafted so well. Right. He didn't get bigger until later, and then he just kept putting in – and then he was going to be like just a when, – when they drafted him, you know, the thing was, all right, he'll, he'll just be a third-down pass rusher. You get a guy like that in the fifth round, that's great. Third down pass, they're important in, in today's game. Well, he became much more than that. He put on some weight. He became pretty good against a run as well as a very good pass rusher. No, yeah, I, those other guys are all – Ike Reese getting in the fifth round, great special teams player, good linebacker. Uh, who was the other guy you said? Uh, David Alexander. Oh, good starting center yeah, for a long time. The, the Zell, Twitter, the Twitter, the Twitter, Twitter people agree with you on Cole. All right, oh, two, two yeah, more to go. I figured Twitter would go with the Brent Seller because he's such a good guy. Six round. This is round six plus. So anything from six after. Okay. Jason Kelsey, Seth Joyner, Clyde Simmons, Mark McMillan. It's Seth or Clyde. I'm going to say Seth. I'm what what say made Seth such a good player? You mentioned his intensity. He was, I mean, he was so good. He belongs in the Hall of Fame. He really does. I can't – well, and the reason he probably wasn't or isn't because the Eagles didn't put him in their own Hall of Fame until two <laughs> years ago. I, that, that was the biggest injustice in the history of sports. You know, there's only two players in the history of football, history, that have more than 50 sacks and 20 interceptions. Only two. Ted Hendricks, okay. who's in the Hall of Fame and deservedly so, one of the best linebackers ever, and Seth Joyner. Wow. Only two guys, Amazing. 50 sacks and 20 interceptions. Well, I love – Seth was one of my favorite players growing up. Just oh, he, he, he was yeah. awesome. It's hard not to put Clyde in there, but I got to go with Seth. Seth uh, slightly the, – The Twitter people are uh, – they might forget those guys because they picked – overwhelmingly picked Kelsey. I'm guessing it might have something to do with his speech. So, yeah, it's a great speech. Yeah, a good play. He's a good – listen, that was a great pick in the sixth right. round. Here, but it, that's not – I mean – All right, say the, I say the best for last. Uh-oh, yeah. The best pick – over the last 35 years in Eagles NFL history, or Eagles history, Carson Wentz, Nick Foles, Donovan McNabb, Brian Dawkins. Brian Dawkins. What, what made Dawkins so good? Again, he was a guy that he, – he, Jim John – you know what made Brian Dawkins real good? And I'm taking nothing away from Brian Dawkins, but I think he would 
agree with you on this. Jim Johnson and Jim Johnson's defense. When they drafted Doc, he was like considered like a cover guy. Matter of fact, a matter of fact, his rookie year, he played a lot of slot corner. Even he would cover the slot mm-hmm. receiver a lot of times because they, they, this way they didn't have to take anybody off the field. They could leave their their base in and just move him to the to the slot. Um, but then Jim saw him and said, "Well, I can do a lot with this guy." And you know, Doc became more than than just a safety. He became, and they, and they got him at the bo- very bottom of the second round. Right. I mean, that was now he was almost. Doc likes to say he was a third round pick because he was a compensatory second round pick. So he was almost a third round pick. And the crazy thing about that draft, talking about crazy drafts, do you know who the Eagles could have had also in that draft? Uh-huh. The same after Brian Dawkins, Ray Lewis. On the same team? They passed on Ray Lewis. Oh, wow. For Jermaine Mayberry, who was a very good guard. Turned good to be guard, right. a Pro Bowl guard. But imagine a, imagine a draft that included Ray Lewis and Brian Dawkins. That would, that would have been the greatest draft for Eagles. And also, but might have gotten to a couple Super Bowls sooner. Mark Eckel joining us here on Bracey Sports Media. Mark, I want to leave you with one question. Uh-huh. When you're just sitting there at home relaxing now that you're mostly well, retired. I'm, I am retired. <laughs> is there is there one moment, whether a game, a story, an interaction, that jumps out when you think about all your years covering the Eagles? Wow, that's a good one. Um, you know what? I'm I'm gonna. This is gonna sound like a bad answer, but just getting getting to know some of the guys and still being friends with them. Like Seth Joyner, I just talked to him last last week. Randall Cunningham, I get, we 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 text each other every every year on our birthdays. Just say ha- happy birthday. Troy Vincent, who I consider a very good friend. We, God, I know his family. I, you know, I used to play with his, now his sons are, I can't believe his sons at Ohio State, the defensive right. tackle now. Wow. You know, he's a little, I remember when he was a little kid running around. So just to say that I got, you know, and that, and that's what's changed a lot too, Aaron. The last, I, I covered a team for 32 years. I would say for 29 of them, it was fun. I didn't think I had a job. It yeah. wasn't a job. It was fun. And everybody says when, you know, I was lucky. I always told you I was fortunate. I, I, I didn't have a job. I, I loved what I did. And, and it was, you know, I made the most of it. The last couple of years, it stopped being fun. And that's yeah. when you know it's time to get out. And that's why I don't look back at all at, at, at getting out. But it just became different. You don't get the acts. Like, like I said, I, I got to be friends with guys like Seth and Hugh Douglas right. and, and Troy and Randall. And I can go on and on. The way that the, way the, the media is now – and not to me, the way the way they the way the media is assembled now. Right. You, you don't have that one on one time with guys. You don't get to know players. Right. Because it's like, all right, Carson Wentz is going to the auditorium at twelve forty five, and a hundred guys follow him, and there, and he stands right. up there, and you, and, and you, you don't get to talk to Carson one on one in the locker room, and it's it's like they you get to interview who they want you to, who they want you to interview when they want you to interview. Mark, it's interesting that you say that. Is the last thing I wanted to bring up, but. Uh, you were kind of a bit of a role model to me growing uh, at, when I was a young reporter at the Trenton Times. I remember covering training camp with you at Lehigh. You helped me out a couple times. And and I remember I was there with you and I said, okay, uh, who are we going to interview next? Kind of like we, the reporter. And he said, like, I don't know who those guys are going to interview, but I'm going to go over here. So you know, and that kind of like taught me a lesson. Like you kind of did your, your own thing kind of separate from what everyone else is doing. That's kind of a little harder to do today, like you said, because of the awesome. access. It's almost impossible today, which is why it became not as much fun for me at, at, at the last couple of years. But I hope I, I hope you learned from that. I hope you absolutely. Okay, <laughs> Mark, it's been yeah, a pleasure. I, I, I never followed the pack. For I was never one of the group guys. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Mark, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining Thanks. us here today on Bracy Sports Media. Definitely read all Mark's stuff on Better's Insider and Packer Report sixty six, and follow him on Twitter. Uh, Mark, wish you the best today. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Aaron. Anytime. Good luck with the with, with the. Uh, what, is, what is this called now? This is a sports media. We're Zoom doing a YouTube channel. YouTube channel. And uh, we're going to have a story as well. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me, Aaron. Thanks Appreciate so much, Mark.